Professor Ray here. Welcome to another exciting adventure in inventions that change the world. Today we're going to talk about an invention that radically changed modern medicine. And that invention is the air pump. How did the air pump possibly change the way we do modern medicine today? Well, it turns out it really didn't, but it makes for a good example for me to demonstrate what we're gonna talk about today. So, the way this air pump works is it has a cylinder, a piston type cylinder. If we pull up on the handle, it sucks air in, we push down, and it pushes air out. And it pushes it out, in this case, through a needle, which has a small hole in it. So if we take a ball, a deflated ball like this, and we push our needle all the way in, it's like putting a needle through our skin. Now if we pump this a few times, we see we are quickly delivering air where it needs to go. We have now taken air and pumped it in here. It's analogous to what we're going to talk about today. And what we're going to talk about today are two devices, the syringe and the hypodermic needle. And it works on basically the same principle. Here we have a syringe. This is the syringe part, this is the hypodermic needle. That needle is hollow and has a hole in the end, much like the needle on this air pump. And much like this pump, the syringe acts as the piston. So what happens, we can draw a material out, and it does so because it reduces the pressure and it sucks the material in. Then when we inject it into a person, we push, and the pressure created drives it into the body. Now, this is really important because if we go back to the basics um, when medicine was first founded, it was pretty crude. In fact, it was akin to false magic trying to get rid of evil spirits. Um, there were surgeries performed where holes were punched in people's heads to try to relieve pressure. And uh, amazingly, sometimes that actually worked. Then doctors got into using herbs, for example, to find med medicinal properties. And yes, indeed, some herbs do have medicinal properties, and we use those to extract medicines today. They also got into developing special devices, and that'd be like bandages, crutches, splints, and casts to help their patients. But it turns out the first reference to a syringe was back in 1 AD, and it was in a uh, Roman medical journal called De Medicina, and it talks about it. It did not show a picture, but it talked about a syringe. And then in the 9th century in Egypt, it was discovered that syringes were used to attempt to remove cataracts out of people's eyes. So if we look back at the words syringe, uh, in the Latin, syringe basically means injection. If we look at the Greek, it's syrinax, and that means tube. So we have a tube used for injection. That is what syringe means. Now, the needle on the end is what we call a hypodermic needle. Hypo means beneath, dermic means skin, so beneath the skin. So this combination of syringe and hypodermic needle is how doctors were able to take medicines and get it into the human body efficiently. It, even though this was discovered around 1 AD, it wasn't until 1844 that an Irish physician named Francis Rind would invent a system that put the two pieces together for the delivery of drugs. And in fact, he used hollow needles that were developed by a Dr. Alexander Wood as the delivery method for drugs. Ironically, Dr. Wood's wife would be the first person to die of a drug overdose when she used the syringe and hypodermic needle and injected herself with too much morphine. So we went through the bicycle pump. We talk about the engineering in this, which is based on pressure. We pull back, the pressure decreases inside the syringe and draws the liquid in. We push, the pressure increases and drives the liquid out. So let's go ahead and do a little demo and see how the syringe actually works. So to demonstrate the syringe, I have some water that has blue food dye in it, and I have this cup which just has clear water in. So what I'll do is insert the syringe, withdraw some of the material 
in, into the syringe and then using the hypodermic needle, place it into the clear water. So what we do is we just pull back slightly. You can see the material going into the syringe. Stick it in here and then push it back out. And lo and behold, we have the hypodermic needle. In 1946, a major breakthrough came in. They developed glass syringes that could be taken apart and they could be sterilized in mass. And this was great because they needed the ability to rapidly sterilize and reuse syringes. Dr. Jonas Salk had just invented the polio vaccine and there was a push to get the polio vaccine administered all over the world as fast as they possibly can. And it would not be until 1974, though, that they would actually come up with a disposable version of the syringe in a plastic format. But they used glass back then, they used steel, and they had to mass sterilize and get the polio vaccine out as quick as they can. So, during the Industrial Revolution, we had something else happen. As factories expanded and wanted to run more efficiently, they started using high-pressure injection systems to send oil and diesel fuel to different parts of the factory. And what was happening is that people would sometimes come in contact with those nozzles and they would have the oil or diesel fuel actually injected into their body. So that's a bad thing. But what happened, scientists saw this and engineers saw this, and they came up with a way to come up with um, high-pressure injection systems. And that came in very important for smallpox. What happened, uh, smallpox inoculations took place. They used pressure-based systems to quickly bang, 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 administer smallpox vaccines to masses of people. That's called a jet injector, and some of those are used today. And finally, they have new devices today called microneedle devices, and sometimes you find these on what are called transdermal patches. Transdermal means it sends the medication through the skin, but these microneedles now, when they touch the skin, they actually dig into the skin, but they are so small, they do not touch the nerves and there is no pain, and it's a better way to deliver material into the system. So all this came about through the invention of the syringe, and the hypodermic needle. So there you have it, syringe and hypodermic needle, an invention that changed the world. This is Professor Ray signing off. We'll see you next time.